Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Webinar Update with myself, David Madden, here at CMC Markets, Market Analyst. Uh, today's date is Monday the 30th of April. The time has just gone 12.15 British Summertime BST. And as always, with the webinars, we will be running through the risk warning slides before we actually proceed with the webinar itself. It's all very straightforward and, and simple. Uh, if you are a regular listener to the webinars, you will you'll know that this is common practice. It's all fairly straightforward, what it says on the, on the slides. It essentially states anything that, that is covered in this webinar is purely my own thoughts, views, comments and opinions and should not be construed as explicit trading or investment advice. Now, well, while the slides are sitting there for you guys to have a read through, I'll just have a quick talk about what's going on in the, uh, the, in the financial markets, the big news of the past few days. Uh, essentially, the, the, the big single stock uh, story of the, of the day has been that that Sainsbury's are interested in merging with Asda. Um, Sainsbury's is the second largest uh, supermarket retailer in the UK. Asda is the third largest. And if the combined proposed merger were to go ahead, the combined group would then actually be the single largest one. It would just narrowly overtake Tesco. You're currently in the top spot. And Morrison's, who are languishing in fourth place, would probably be a very distant third place should the takeover go ahead. But it's all it's, that is still subject to a regulatory approval, so it isn't necessarily a done deal. But at the time being, Sainsbury's has, has, had, a, has had a great ordinary up, to, up uh, the last I saw, 50%, whereas uh, Sainsbury's and Morrison's are likely to suffer on the back of this deal going ahead, and they are lower on the session. What else we got? Big macro news. Uh, tomorrow is tomorrow's the 1st of May. Big, the deadline for whether um, President Trump is going to look to impose sang- going to look to impose sanctions on the European Union or not. It's not lo- it's not looking likely that he will, but at the same time, that is still something that that, that, that is something on traders' minds. Now, speaking of trade and sanctions, the uh, the United States of America sent its trade delegation over to China to talk about trade, and this is also something that is is, is playing on traders' minds. Now, there's a possibility a trade war could break out. There's been no further developments on it, but equity markets in Europe have had a good run. Uh, the FTSE is at a, a, a multi-month high. Things are looking fairly fairly stable in Germany as well. And on top of that, we, we, we will, so traders will be keeping an eye off. Uh, on top of that, traders are going to be keeping an eye off for what's going on on the political front because we had, uh, about a month ago, equity markets came under a lot of pressure for fear we could have a global trade war. Now, nothing has really progressed on that, but no... Good news has led to the markets pushing. No bad news has led to the equity markets broadly pushing higher in Europe the last few weeks. Now it could be a bit, a bit, of, a, bit of a crunch point. It could be a case that nothing really comes from this and we could like to continue on that, on that move. But in the next few sessions, I think the possibility of a trade war is going to be the main focus. Uh, also, uh, as always with the webinars, what I'll do is do a quick run through of... Um, of, of the various different events on this week. So go to our the news analysis section or website. This is where some of the news and analysis that we do gets posted. If you scroll along here, um, on this, this is the, the page you're going to open now, the week ahead. It gives a breakdown. This gets posted uh, every Friday and it gives a breakdown of the uh, the major news uh, and a corporate and economic events of the, of the week ahead. So a quick skim through that. This is something to keep an eye out for, for in terms of... Uh, potential market moves during the week so tomorrow tuesday the which is the first of may we will have first quarter figures from bp second quarter figures from apple and first quarter figures from snap snap the owner of snapchat on wednesday we have a fed reserve meeting now even though even though we're not expecting the interest rate in the united states to to, to move the update and, and the statement that follows could be important in fact that's probably going to be the main focus of wednesday's session so the, as always with the, with, the, with the update from the Federal Reserve, it, the, 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 the key will be in the language. Um, the Federal Reserve, there's a, there's, there's talk that the Fed could have three more interest rates in 2018. Now, we've already had a rate hike in March, which is which was expected, wasn't too much of a surprise. Whether we have three more or potentially two more uh, is, 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 what traders are, is what the is what traders are very much divided over. So the language that the Fed used on Wednesday could be a... Could be a way for the Federal Reserve to set the tone or pave the way for a potential rate hike on uh, sorry in uh, in next month. This here is actually inac- is actually now out of date. Uh, Sainsbury's were due to post their fund year figures on Wednesday, 
but because they have the uh, their announcement over the weekend of interest interest in merging with Asda, CNB has figured, you know what, what's the point when on Wednesday? We, we're going to update the market on Monday today about, about the proposed merger with Asda. Let's just uh, announce all the figures in one go. Uh, on Friday, we have first quarter figures from international consolidated airlines. And on Friday, we also have the quarterly non-farm payrolls update as well from the United States. So between the Federal Reserve on Wednesday and non-farm payrolls on Friday, it's going to be a big week for, uh, for, for things like, like the US dollar, for US indices and in turn global indices and also markets like gold. Uh, then a, run, a rundown of various different companies that are, that are figures out. I mentioned a couple already. Pfizer also are figures out on, on Tuesday. On Wednesday, um, companies, companies such as the Hyatt Group have, have figures coming out. Uh, MasterCard have figures coming out on Wednesday. Scrolling down to, to, to Thursday, we can see that Sotheby's have, have figures out. And on Friday, HSBC, the last of the big British banks, to report their figures uh, come out on Wednesday. Now, for those of you um, who ch tune in regularly, this this may come as a slight surprise, uh, but what, what, but this is going to be for the time being the last Monday webinar uh, at 12:15 that we're that we're going to be having. Uh, we we're, we're going to be taking a break for the month of May. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we are going to be having a think about how we can change do things a bit, a bit differently. Uh, in relation to the to the update, so um, it's there's, there's, there's a possibility we could be looking at restarting doing a doing a webinar um, as of June, but for, but for the month of May, there will be no Monday market update. Now we will be having an, a a market update on Friday coming for the non farm payrolls amongst the other amongst the other webinars. But what I got, what I need you guys to do the, the the regular tuners in and listeners to this to this webinar. Um, Throughout the actual webinar, um, you'll have opportunity to kind of talk about, to interact and talk about what uh, what you'd like to see from a webinar because we're looking at basically changing the, how, how we do things here. So what I'm going to do is talk to you now about any potential way, any any opportunity, and any kind of ways that you'd like to see the webinar enhanced or improved or changed or altered. Feel free to have a think about it during the webinar. Feel free to put it in the in the chat section or the comment section. I can read it. Um, and we will we, we then go from there because, like I said, we won't be holding uh, the Monday market webinar in the month of May. So this, this will be the last one for, for, the, um, for the in the near term. We're looking uh, possibly at restarting it and uh, the, the webinars, the, the updates in the month of June. Nothing absolutely set in concrete as of yet, but, but but if you do, we would like to do a potential potential change to it. And for, for you guys who are regular listeners to the webinar, the, the live webinar. If there's anything, any thoughts, any opinions, any comments you want to give, feel free to, to state that because we're happy to. We're not necessarily absolutely entirely wedded to the process that, that we do every single Monday. Um, but at the same time, if you want anything to be done differently in terms of things you look at or, or how it's structured, feel free to put that in the comment section. And I can never, I can never read through that after the webinar itself is over. As always... Um, I'm going to be doing the cover of the major markets now. Uh, I'll be getting on to the kind of body of the webinar in a second. country indices, currencies, and commodities. And if there are any markets that I haven't covered that you don't want me to cover, feel free to do that. So like I said, when I go to the webinar, feel free to you know, have a think about what you'd like to see uh, of future webinars from CMC and how we can do this one differently. And feel free, any comments, positive or negative, or any ideas, suggestions, feel free to just put them out there. Um, feel free to type in, in the chat box while the webinar is going on, because obviously once the webinar comes to an end, that all that all gets I guess gets closed down. If you want to contact me over Twitter, it's d madden m a d d e n underscore c m c is my Twitter handle. So if you want to get in contact that way, feel free to do it that way as well. So if any suggestions at all, seriously, I really do urge you guys any suggestions, feel free. But that's enough of that, pushing on with the actual webinar itself. So take a look now here at the FTSE 100, first one off the bat. FTSE's had a decent run in recent weeks. Had us got a solid upward trend for basically for just about five or six weeks now. As you can see here, hit a level here, not seen since, since basically February, early February of this year. So the market's pushing higher, firmly above the 200-day moving average, which comes into play in around just south of 7,400, but the market's pushing higher here. The next big level to watch out for to the upside will be 7,600, 
And if you go north of that, towards 7,700, and if you take off 7,700, then of course you'll be looking towards the all-time high, just, just north of 7,800. Notice how as the market is pushing higher, uh, the MACD indicator is, is quite strong. So the, 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 the market's pushing higher and buying momentum is still strong. So that's uh, that's basically the kind of the, the view on, on the FTSE. Should we move south? Should we have a bit of a pullback? Because given that we've had effectively a month of almost like straight gains, a bit of a pullback wouldn't be a bit of a surprise. And if you do, we could find some support coming into play in around the 7,400 area or south of that even down at 7,300. And it's only if I have, I have a size of a break below the, the 50 day moving average here at 7,200 because then we actually be looking at heading back down towards 7,000. I take a look, look now at the euro market. So as you, as you can see here, the euro market also has had a decent move over the last month. But notice how on several occasions it seems to run out of steam any time it approaches the 200 day moving average, which comes into play at around 12,000. 666 so it's almost like there's a kind of a bit of a barrier at that price area but at the same time we haven't seen the move market much lower we just haven't really managed to kind of break break north of that big barrier so a move breaks north of, of the charity moving average you could see it's heading back up towards this level here the um the january low of the early january low of 12741 and sh should we go north of that they keep an eye out for the, the big psychological number. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Apologies for that. Um, should we go should we go north of twelve thousand seven hundred forty one? This area here from early January of this year, we could be looking at adding back up towards thirteen thousand. That'd be the big psychological number. And also, the market is basically kind of trapped between the fifty moving average. But it comes to the play around 12,310 and the Trinity moving average. So if you have a size of a break south of the, the Trinity moving average, that could take us back down towards 12,000. But what I'm going to point out about this is, even though the market is edging higher, we're seeing a fairly obvious taper off in buying momentum. So the market isn't pushing higher and we're not seeing an, an increase in momentum. So it could be a case of we might be in the near term in for, in for a bit of a pullback because it would appear to me that the that the the, uh, the buyers are running out of a bit of steam. Take a look at what's going on in the US with the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones has also been a bit range bound recently. Um, ultimately, the way I see it is this, the market is still holding above the utility moving average, this, this red line here, which comes into play in around 23,700 or 23,770, there thereabouts. Even though the market doesn't look particularly overly strong, while it remains north of that key metric, it's likely that, that, that I think a wider kind of bullish trend over the last few weeks is going to continue. But that being said, it's also struggled to break north of the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 24,600. 24, and it's also proved, proved, proved uh, it's an inability to get, to get north of the 100 day moving average. Which it comes to play at 24,895. So these are a couple of metrics that we need to actually clear before we can become more confident that Dow's in a upward trend. Should we go north of the of the 100 day moving average, the next area to keep an eye out for will be 25,000, and then beyond that, the mid this mid the mid March high of 25,507. A break below the 200 day moving average, uh, this this red line here could send us back down towards the February low of 23,118. So 23,138, uh, and if you do, if you take out that level, that will then be a fresh um, 2018 low, and that will that will be pointing towards further losses. Take a look now at what's going on in the gold market. Gold is uh, edging lower yet again. The uh, the firmer U.S. dollar has take as a uh, has hit the price of gold. Notice how it's seen a lot of price consolidation in around the 100 100 day moving average at uh, 13 1320 we're currently at 1314 so we're, we're a few dollars below that but at the same time we see a lot of consolidation in around it so it suggests that if you try it's trying its best to get, to get away from that metric and if you continue to push south from here because the price action in the last few sessions has been the downside a steady increase in negative momentum so the market's pushing lower the momentum is increasing and that this that's the negative momentum that is so momentum is clearly with the sellers and with the bears 
if I do manage to keep push on lower from here, the next area to keep on eye for will be the mid March low of 1306. And then south of that, the big psychological important 1300 number, 1300, which actually basically coincides with the 20 moving average. Move to the upside, it will need to clear 1330, the 50 moving average, before we could, before we could, before we could, uh, Kind of, kind of begin to restore kind of a positive outlook for the gold market and should we go north of there we can then be looking up towards the uh, 1352 1354 region which is seen here at the uh, kind of the middle the middle of this month take a look now at the oil market like i was saying if there are any ways you think we can improve this the, the weapon or, or i think you want to do differently feel free to type in the chat box as seeing as no one has given any advice or recommendations as so far, it's just a reminder that the, the option is still there and feel free to do it. So WT, so we're looking here at the oil market, we're looking at, at uh, Brent oil. Brent oil last week hit a fresh 41 month high. Uh, we're a touch lower on the back of it, but still we're very much in the upward trend. Like I said, it's at a 41 month high, multi-year high. It's, in a, it's been in a classic up, upward trend for, for several months now. Even though we saw a sizable enough correction in, in, uh, in February, the market has been creating higher highs and higher lows, so it's still very much an upward trend. If you continue to push on higher from here, the next area to keep an eye on for the upside will be 76.10, and should we go beyond that towards $77 a barrel. Move to the downside, may find some support coming to play in around the 72.40 area. And if you go south of that again, we could be looking at coming to play in around the $71 per barrel. It's only if we see a break south of the April low, which comes into play at this area here. In around 76 67 rather 67 56 and 40 in around here because then we actually look to actually move lower yet again and, that, and then we could head back down towards the 65 dollars per barrel area Thank you for your advice there, Steve. I appreciate that. I'll have a, I'll have a, I'll have a look at the uh, proper, uh, uh, a bit of a chat about the actual um, the actual recommendations when the when the webinar is over. But if you get any, anyone else, if anyone else wants to uh, type in some chat, type in, enter in some uh, feedback or commentary for on the uh, how the webinar is run, feel free to do so. I'll just continue with the webinar for now and then look to actually have a chat about it when the webinar comes to an end. Uh, in about 15 minutes time so take a look at the WTI market it's a very similar chart WTI also last week racked up a multi 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 month high as you can see here the oil market is in a classic actually it was actually the, the week before it actually racked up uh, so about 10 days ago WTI was at a fresh 41 month high as you can see the market really hasn't moved a whole lot from there we can see so the wider trend is very much to the upside so that that that, that should um that's the, kind of the clue you need to be looking at. The, the big picture trend is still very much in place. We've been edging slightly lower. We've seen a decline in positive momentum. And actually, momentum has actually swung to the negative now. So we may see the market drift a bit lower from here. Areas of potential um, um, potential support may come into play in around the $66 a barrel level. And perhaps if you dro drop further south from there, you can be taking it back down towards 62 which would be the early April low. And once again, so you really, really need to be getting nervous about a correction in the old market. If you go south of 62, we could be looking at getting support from $60 a barrel. But it's only you want to be nervous um, about the outlook for oil if it goes below the the, uh, the February lows of 58.10. That could be that could be uh, suggest or point to further losses. But move to the upside and all could, could take us take us toward the psychologically important $70 per barrel. Then it go once beyond that. We could be looking at heading towards uh, up towards 71, 72, so on and so forth. Take a look now. As I mentioned, the US dollar is quite strong and it's weighing on the price of gold. And one of the main losers on the back of the strong greenback has, of course, been the US. Well, has, of course, been the euro. So take a look now at the euro euro dollar chart. What we can see here: the euro last Friday. Drop down to, 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 to drop down to a level not seen since the pretty middle of January. So we're, we are talking about you know more than more than a three month low on the euro versus euro dollar on Friday. The market has been tail tapering off here, 
we've seen a steady increase in negative momentum. So the buying pressure uh, is still very much with the uh, with the sellers and, and with the bears. So while we remain south of say the, the this level here, the the one hundred day moving average, which comes into play in around one twenty to twenty, the outlook for for uh, for the euro dollar in the near term could remain could remain uh, could remain bearish. And if, should we drift lower from here, the next area to keep an eye out for will of course be the two hundred day moving average, which comes into into play in around the one twenty, basically just just pretty much on one twenty. This red line here, the two hundred day moving average. That'll be a big uh, metric to keep an eye out for. And if you go south of the the 120 area, then keep an eye out for the, this this area here, of the high from that from like late November of one spot 1961. And if you go south of that, there's a lot of consolidation in around the 119 level itself. If you retake the, the 100 day moving average at 122 spot 20. We could be looking heading up towards 123, coinciding with the 50-day moving average. And if you go north of that, we could be looking at going heading up towards 124. Take a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. As I said, starting the US dollar has had a good run, and also surfing on the back of that has been the pound. This is also partially driven by the fact that that uh, Mar the Bank of England isn't uh, as likely to raise interest rates next month um, as initially suggested. Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, has a reputation of being an unreliable boyfriend, and that actually appears to be the, that actually seems to be the case yet again. So Mark Carney last week updated the market, stating that. Basically, a, a rate hike next week. I was a rate hike next month really isn't a done deal. And on the back of that, we, what have we seen? We've seen a fairly sizable sell-off, sizable sell-off in the pound versus the U.S. dollar. And even to the point where, if you draw a low uh, between the collected lows from March last year to August last year, granted, I know it trades occasionally through it in November last year. This trend line here, we can see that actually been very much actually, has actually been breached. Uh, and the market is actually now south of the trend line. So when a trend line is broken, it doesn't necessarily suggest that we're going to see a complete massive change in trend, bearing in mind this has been in a, in a solid upward trend for over a year. It often just means the existing trend will continue but at a, at a, at a less steeper gradient or, or steeper rate. So this doesn't suggest that the market is all, all of a sudden going to completely sell off. It just means that we, we could see the market drift a bit lower here, and then if, if the wider positive trend resumes, it, it continues but at a less um, a, a less aggressive rate, if that makes sense. So rather than actually say a, a mar the market say at a 45 degree angle, uh, expect uh, growing that way, it might be, might, might uh, be say at a, at a more say 25 or 30 degree uh, angle. So it, while we remain south of this trend line in the near term, we could see the market drift lower. We could see it head back down towards the 136.65 area. This is the uh, the high from 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 uh, September last year because that, that's the kind of next big kind of price point to watch out for. South of there, we could be heading back down towards the the 136 area. We saw a bit of consolidation at 136, and then south of that again, back down towards the 20 moving average, which comes into play in around one spot 35.20. Now, we could see a drift lower towards down towards. One uh, one spot thirty five twenty, but given that it's been an upward trend for thirteen months, I suspect the wider upward trend is going to continue. And if the market does does get does continue to push on from here, area to keep an eye for will of course be one thirty nine. Saw the consolidation on one thirty nine, and then of course the one forty area. And notice how one forty coincides with the fifty day moving average. So it's a big psychological number. It coincides with the fifty day moving average, which recently, as we saw, acted as both support here. Uh, at the beginning of the month, and also resistance here towards the end of the month. So, if, 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 a, if the metric has um, has acted as support of resistance, has been significant recently, it makes it more likely that that'll be significant again in the near term. Keep an eye on what's going on on the euro versus the sorry, the euro versus the British pound. So, if there are any markets you want me to have a look at, feel free to uh, shout out. If there any anybody else, I appreciate that, Steve, uh, in relation to to the feedback. If there any anyone else who's listening out there, 
want to give some feedback on how we can improve the seminar or, or the webinar rather or alter it, feel free to type in type in the box uh, in the next few minutes because I will be wrapping up the webinar itself in a few minutes' time. So Euro Sterling in the last few sessions has had a fairly fairly decent bounce back. Uh, after after getting a multi month low only a few weeks ago, uh, levels not seen taking us back all the way back until May last year, so not too far off one month lows. Mark has a fairly decent jolt higher, but while we remain south of the 100, 200 day moving average here at 0 0.8881, it's likely the outlook is going to remain negative. Now, the market's pushing higher here. It's taken up the, the 50 day moving average and 100 day moving average, but the real asset test will be the 200 day moving average at 0 0.8881. If the market does turn over on itself again, the next area to keep an eye out for will be the kind of 87 area, and then, then of course south of that will be the recent lows of 0 0.8620, and if you go south of that, then of course the kind of psychological 0 0.86 and 0 0.85. If you do manage to take off the 20 moving average at 0 0.8881, the next big, the really big area to keep an eye out for will be the early March high of 0 0.8967, and if you go beyond that, 0 0.90 will be the area to keep an eye out for next. Uh, this is going to be the last market I'm going to take a look at, unless of course there are any markets you guys would like me to have a look at. I'm going to take a look now at the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. So as you can see here, there's been a fairly sizable sell-off in the dollar yen throughout 2018, but it is making a fairly decent comeback. Uh, market's pushing higher here. It's, t it's, it's reclaimed the 50-day moving average. It's even re reclaimed the 100-day moving average. Now, the asset test is going to be the 200-day moving average coming to play at 110 spot 30. Um, so, broadly speaking, the market's been pushing higher the last about five or six weeks. Broadly speaking, we've seen a sizable enough increase in positive momentum. So, momentum over the last five or six weeks has been with the buyers, which is a good sign uh, if you're long. But, the market has seemed to kind of be getting a bit of a, a bit of a kind of a sideways move, kind of a consolidation move in around here. And notice how we're seeing a bit of a slip off in positive momentum. So we are seeing a bit of a bit of the, the pressure and the momentum from the buyers wane a bit. So we may see the market in the near term slip, slide a bit lower. So I may find some support from the one or two moving average at 105, 108 spot 86, or perhaps even down as low as 108. Uh, but but given the move of the past say, five or six weeks has been the upside, we could be looking at testing the 200 moving average at 110 spot 23 in the near term. And if you go north of that, keep an eye out then for the early, kind of late January high of 111 spot 48. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading back up towards again a 113.57, 113.60 region up here. If the market does uh, does uh, take out the 50 day moving average here at one. 106.87. The next area to keep an eye for the downside would be 106, and then of course the March low of 104 spot 63. So, uh, I'll quickly now talk about a few items in our platform as I always do. So, like I said, some of the updates that we do get posted to the news and analysis section of our website, which of course is here. But all other updates that we do throughout the day, uh, particularly live data alerts, get posted to Market Insights, which is which is this tab that I've opened here. Market insights can be found under the market pulse and it's the second option down. What we also do throughout the day uh, is update the chart forum. And this isn't just for CMC market employees, it's also for CMC market account holders. So you guys can actually also update chart forum as well and try and get a conversation going about what you think of certain markets. So if that's what you do in chart forum, it can be found under market, market pulse. It is the third option down. Chart forum is essentially a snapshot of a particular chart and a few of the words written about the actual chart itself, what do we think of the price action is doing, or where do we think the market's going, or key levels to potentially keep an eye out for. Also under the market pulse can be found the, the economic calendar, market calendar, fourth option down, and it'll give you the actual, as soon as data comes out, it'll, uh, it'll be populated in there, the actual figure will be out, and it'll also give you the consensus expected, and also give you the, the, the previous uh, figure as well, so keep an eye out for that. So. What to watch out for this afternoon session is going to be German CPI is coming out uh, in about 15 minutes, 1.5. That we don't want to watch out for uh, in the near term. Um, also, I want to point out, like I said, 
uh, the Monday market webinar is not it's not going to be held uh, during the month of May. We're looking at um, rebooting it um, in in June or possibly afterwards, but like we're looking at possibly doing it a bit differently. Uh, thank once again. Appreciate your feedback, Steve. If there's anybody else that wants to write some, some feedback or some commentary, uh, f feel free to do so. I'll put it in the in in chat box. All feedback is welcome, positive or, or neg negative. We're all about improving the service that we have here. So feel free to type in the chat box. I also want to point out other webinars that are, that are going on. On Wednesday, the 2nd of May at half nine, uh, at 19, thir uh, 19.30, 7.30 p.m. British Summer Time. We have the live global market report and on Friday the 4th of May at, at quarter past one we'll have the US non-farm payrolls live cover so that's, that's 1315 British summer time quarter past one uh, London time and then on Tuesday the 8th of May we also have the uh, trader development program part one uh, foundations of technical analysis which you'd really re recommend tuning into technical, technical analysis is a very helpful tool in predicting for short-term trading and that webinar is going on Tuesday the 8th of May at 1900 uh, BST, 7 p.m. UK time. So if there's no other uh, comments and markets you want to look at, uh, and if there's no other, other um, if there's no other, uh, any other feedback you want to give, I uh, appreciate your, your time. There's going to be a video of this webinar on our inside section within the next hour or so. Um, and I do want to thank you all very much from, for tuning in and for your feedback. So from all of us here at CMC Markets, have a good trading week and good luck.